Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It is good to gather with you. It's the fourth Sunday of Easter. Um, and so we continue our journey through Acts. Um, and today we get two stories, actually. We get one from Acts, and then we get one from 1 Thessalonians. And next week we'll get one from Acts and one from 1 Corinthians, and then we'll dive into Corinthians for a while. But um, it's fun to kind of see the story in Acts where Paul comes to the city and then to read his letters back to them. Um, I appreciate kind of that, that setup. Um, everything that you need for worship is in your bulletin. And if you need or want the music for the songs, that's in your hymnal, which is under your seat and the page and the hymn numbers are in your bulletin. And if you are worshiping with us at home, we welcome you. Um, and we certainly welcome you to worship with us in person anytime you are available at 9.30 on a Sunday. Um, and you can find the bulletin at our website, which is www.ctvelca.org, if you're watching this close to when it airs. Otherwise, they just simply craft a while. I think that's all I need to tell you. Sue is not here today, so sing loud. Um, hopefully the songs, we try to pick songs that are familiar. She's enjoying a, a weekend with her daughter, so we give thanks that she's able to do that. Um, and we'll just sing songs with full voice um, as we're able. Um, yeah. So with all of that kind of out of the way, I'd like you to take a moment of silence with me as we center our hearts and our minds to be more fully present in this place at this time. And now as you're able and as it's comfortable for you to do so, we invite you to stand as we confess our sins and hear God's words of forgiveness. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Risen Lord, we confess to you, to ourselves, and to one another that we have caused harm by the things we have said and done, and by the things we have not said and not done. Take away our sins that we might fully embody your commandment to love you with all our hearts, souls, minds, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. In grace and mercy, God forgives all our sins and with joy and expectation calls us into new life for the sake of the world, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. And we sing in the joy of that forgiveness our gathering song, We Christian Friends Rejoice.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We sing our canticle of praise. Establish churches and communities near and far. Take us outside of ourselves and teach us to give away what you have given to us. Show us how to witness to your presence in places near and far. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. First reading is taken from the 17th chapter of Acts. After Paul and Silas had passed through Amopolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three <coughs> Sabbath days argued with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead and saying, This is the Messiah, Jesus, whom I am proclaiming to you. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews became jealous, and with the help of some ruffians in the marketplaces, they formed a mob and set the city in the door. While they were searching for Paul and Silas to bring them out to the assembly, they attacked Jason's house. When they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some brothers and sisters before the city authorities, shouting, These people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has entertained them as guests. 
they are all acting contrary to the decrees of the emperor, saying that there is another king named Jesus. The people and the city officials were disturbed when they heard this, and after they had taken Baal from Jason and the others, they let them go. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy from the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For they report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Beware, for they will hand you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them. And the good news must first be proclaimed to all nations. When they bring you to trial and hand you over, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say, but say whatever is given you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I've long loved the concept of inertia. Do you remember what that is? An object in motion tends to remain in motion and an object at rest tends to remain at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. So ever since I learned about that on the days that I'm feeling lazy and I just can't, you know, get up the move to do anything, I say, I'm a victim of inertia because a body at rest tends to remain at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. So that's my excuse. Now, of course, that's a concept in physics, but we see that principle, I think, at work in this story we get from Acts and from the letter of 1 Thessalonians about Paul and Silas and their time in Thessalonica or Thessalonica or Thessalonica. I've heard it pronounced all of those ways, and I couldn't tell you which one is like the right one. But we today have jumped way forward in the book of Acts. Last week we were in chapter 3, I think. We were in Jerusalem with Paul and John doing the healing, and now we have fast-forwarded to Paul and Silas, who are on a missionary journey. And a lot of stuff has happened in between, but we'll kind of like sum up to get us to this point. Um, one of the important things that we missed along the way was Paul's transformation, right? He had been a known as Saul, that's his Jewish name. Paul is kind of like his name in the Greek-speaking world. 
And so as Saul, he's persecuting the followers of the way. That's what they called the early Christian believers. And now he is an apostle to the Gentiles. And after he had that encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. Paul has been to a lot of places since then. He was commissioned by the church of Antioch in Syria. And then he goes on a trip and he kind of circles back and he goes, he goes east and then he, or he goes west and comes back east to Jerusalem where he has a meeting with the council there. Those would have been like Peter and James and John and those early followers and leaders of the church. And then he heads back out on yet another. This is missionary trip number two. And we catch up with him in Thessalonica where Luke tells us that Paul has gone to the synagogue three Sabbaths in a row to talk with his fellow Jews about Jesus. To teach them, to try and persuade them that Jesus was the Messiah. And it's here that we see him running into the challenges of inertia. Because both the Jews in that place and the Greeks in that place would rather that the direction of their lives, of their motion, or their rest would not be acted upon by an outside force. For the other Jews in that city in Greece, certainly, Paul's message about the Messiah, about Jesus, kind of upended what they thought the Messiah was supposed to be. The general expectation for the Messiah was that he would be a human being, a conquering king, bringing political, economical, spiritual deliverance to the Jewish people, ushering in this era of peace and prosperity and righteousness, which would kind of flow through them to the people around them. So a man who comes and suffers and dies to usher in God's coming kingdom was not on their bingo card. This is not something that they are expecting. And it would have been disruptive for the Greeks who were living under Roman rule at that time, too. Thessalonica was thoroughly imperialized. It was committed to the ways of the Roman Empire. There's all of these people living there together. And they were kind of bought into the message of the Roman propaganda about itself, which is that the emperor is the one who brings peace and stability to the people. And we, we kind of ignore the fact that Rome's peace came through violence and the enslavement of their enemies and the military occupation of the regions that they conquered, right? But under Rome, we have peace and stability. It's two sides of the same basic coin, right? That peace and prosperity comes to the people by someone else's power and authority over them. So what Paul and Silas have to say, turn that upside down. And that's when inertia kicks in, right? The people don't want to hear that the trajectory of their lives needs to change. They don't appreciate this outside force coming in and trying to shift them in a new direction or put them in motion at all. So some of the Jews in that place, because of course some of the Jews believe what Paul has to say, along with, say, along with the God-fearing Greek citizens and not a few of the leading women. But some of them are so upset that they gather this mob and they set the city in an uproar and they go looking for Paul and Silas and they can't find them so they settle for Jason who has welcomed them into his home and shown them hospitality. And they bring them in front of the authorities and they say they are acting contrary to the decrees of the emperor, saying there is another king named Jesus. Paul is upsetting the apple cart and they do not like it. That's true for us today too, I think. That's, that's why we love the Bible, right? Like we can look at the biblical stories and say, oh yeah, we can see that playing out in our own lives. Inertia is a powerful force, and it is so hard to overcome it. We see it in the secular culture around us, and we see it in the culture of the church writ large. Because we both tend to like the status quo. We like remaining at rest. 
we're traveling unimpeded in the direction that we are headed. It's just way easier to just stay on course, right? To follow the well-beaten path that has been trodden before us, it requires way less energy. If you want to switch, it requires a lot of mental energy. And people who have often benefited from the ways that things seem to have always been, we like to just keep the peace. So when someone or something comes along that calls into question our way of life, calls into question what it is we believe about the world or about God or about ourselves, we, we don't much care for that. Let this body at rest remain at rest. Thank you very much. And it's always interesting for us as 21st century Christians living in the United States to read these stories of the early church because we have a tendency to put ourselves, like to equate ourselves. Like we can see ourselves in there, but we are not exactly the same, and that's kind of the danger, right? We like to think that we too are subject to oppression or persecution. But the reality is that even though our influence is waning, Christianity has been the dominant, central, controlling power in much of the world for centuries. And the church doesn't always like to be questioned, does it? So when the voices of the people who have been harmed along the way speak up and speak out, they get noticed just like Paul and Silas did, because they disturb our inertia. And there is pushback, right? When people push us to work for equality and justice and inclusion, we want to put on the brakes, right? You think about women's suffrage and the right to vote, the civil rights movement, marriage equality, the pushback against transgender folks, culture and church often. Church should be leading the way, and church often is like, wait, hold on, stop. We don't want to expand access and rights and dignity for wider and wider communities of people. Because change is hard, and that inertia is real. It is why we so often need an outside force to move us. Because we can't really move ourselves sometimes. Paul certainly acted as that outside force as he traveled the ancient Roman Empire, but it wasn't Paul, just Paul being himself as a human being with powers of persuasion and a bulldog, you know, persistence. It was the power of the Holy Spirit moving in Paul's life. The Spirit showing up on the road to Damascus that changed his ways of thinking and understanding of who God was and what God was doing and who Jesus had been that pushes him out then to stop persecuting and instead to stop sharing good news. I always laugh because Paul was so, so stubborn and so aggressive that the people aren't going to share it. Jesus himself has to show up on the road, right? Jesus has to be the outside force in Paul's life. <clears throat> and then Paul is sent forth to be that for others. It was a big task because the status quo of what the Thessalonians, both Jews and Greeks alike, had always known and believed to be true about God and about themselves was not in alignment with God's vision of the world. I read a quote this past week by Pastor Benjamin Kremer. Kremer? I don't know how you say his name. He said, Our Christianity should sound like the world is full of neighbors to be understood and loved, not the world is full of enemies to be feared and conquered. Jesus came to show us that reality, and somehow so many of us, <clears throat> whether in our faith life or just in our world, like that is humanity, right? Like there's the people we know and love and trust, and then there's other people. 
who we are suspicious of, or jealous of, or angry at. We set up these lines, and Jesus is always crossing those boundaries and there's those borders. And there is this radical difference between what is so often our status quo in our world, in the way that we understand God and our neighbor, and the stark difference of God's vision and hope and plan, what God is pulling us all towards in the world, which is God's extravagant love and radical welcome and ever-widening inclusion. One in which we come to see that all people are fellow beloved children of God, no matter where they are from, no matter what they believe. Where we come to accept one another because God says we are worthy. And so we treat one another with dignity instead of suspicion and anger and jealousy and fear and all of those things. That's where we're headed. Because the kingdom of God that Jesus came to reveal and to usher in for us is one in which the hungry are fed and the naked are clothed and the stranger is welcomed, where the last will be first and the first will be last. When we are living under God's rule, we, we are growing to trust that God's love is for all of us. That God provides enough for everyone, and so we don't have to be in competition with one another. We need this outside force to move us. It was the outside force of the Spirit working through Paul that disrupted the inertia in Thessalonica, and it transformed that community. It's funny, like we did we didn't read the rest of it, but right after this, you know, they, they haul Jason before the, the authorities, and then the next the next paragraph is Paul and Silas escaping the town under the cover of darkness. And they go to the next town over to Berea and they start doing the same thing. And the people in Thessalonica are like, oh, they're working over there. So they follow them and run them out of town there too. And so Paul writes back to them because it's not safe for him to go. He gives thanks to God. He's heard from Timothy. Timothy has gone and come back. He thanks God because of their work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope. Because following Jesus is countercultural, and it got them noticed both in challenging ways and in good ways, so that the word of their faith has spread. As they have learned to live that faith out through acts of service and love for their neighbors. So the word and the good news grows and goes. And we too feel this power of God at work through the Holy Spirit, through our baptism, through our worship, through our study, through our community. That spirit overcoming our own inertia. Overcoming the resistance where we have been too long at rest and pushing us out into new directions to follow Jesus, who calls us and empowers us to love and serve our neighbors so that more and more we too may be known by the communities around us, by our faith in God which shares good news of love and hope and joy and peace that is for us and for all the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.
Together with the whole church, we profess our faith using the words of the Nicene's, Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the promise of the resurrection, we pray for the church, the world, <coughs> and all in need. O oh God, you sustained Paul and the early Christians through harsh opposition and persecution. Give us the persistence to do your work of justice even when we face strong pushback or personal risk. God of new life, hear our prayer. We human beings are the most adaptable creatures on earth, inhabiting even the most hostile of climates. Wherever we live, fill us with the mutual love for the natural world around us, that we would sustain the environments that sustain us. God of new life, hear our prayer. <coughs> Open the minds of all who lead to new ideas and learnings from younger generations and other nations that together we might solve the issues that negatively affect the whole world. God of new life, hear our prayer. Bring healing and wholeness to those recovering from injury or surgery and to all whose health is challenged in any way, especially Ethel, Richard, Herb, Krista, Jim, Lois, Kathy, Eric, Tim, Laura, John, and those we name silently or aloud. God of new life, hear our prayer. Comfort the victims of violence, especially gun violence, and bring healing to families and communities <clears throat> torn apart by it. Commit us in doing whatever is needed to end violence in our nation and our world. God of new life, hear our prayer. So many saints from Paul to the present have risked their safety, their reputations, and their lives for the sake of the gospel. 
Inspire us by their example to be willing to do whatever is needed to make sure your message of love and justice is carried forward. God of new life, hear our prayer. We place in your arms all for whom we pray, out loud or in our hearts, confident in your mercy and grace, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer ourselves, our time, and our resources to you, that you would use them to transform our world for the good of all people and all creation. Accept these signs, gifts as a sign of our faithfulness to you and our commitment to the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink. 
saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the beloved people of God. Please come to the feast for all is now ready. <coughs>
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The announcements are on the insert. Um, I think we're going to skip Bible study today because Sue's not here and Paul and John are not here and we you know, have a small crowd, so half of our people are gone. We'll just wait, but we will. There's, I saw like three different people bringing goodies in, so there's plenty for everyone. So please hang around and get a cup of coffee or tea and some, some snacks, even if you want to grab it on your way out the door. Um, next week... Uh, is Coins in Your Pocket Sunday. It's the last Sunday of the month already. Um, and as I said, we'll be hopping into Corinthians for a while, so we get introduced to that community um, next week. I also put in here uh, the Synod event, um, which is called the Adventures in Renewal Collab, like a collaboration. Um, but I would suspect my husband's part of the planning for this, and that's about all I know, but I would suspect he has something to do with the name, because that's what the kids call it. Like, when they're playing a video game together, they call it collab. So that's what the kids today are saying, at least in my house. Um, but it's a free event. It's a chance for us to learn more about some of the resources that the Senate has for mission renewal. As you look around, you see that we might need a little renewing. And so if you're interested in going to that, please let me know. Um, the sign-up is on the Synod website, which is milwaukeesynod.org. Um, but it would be great if we had some, some folks go, if that's something that you're, that the Spirit is, you know, pushing you out of your inertia um, to maybe go in a new direction. Let me know. We could go together. It's in, um, all that information is online, but it's in Waukesha next Sunday from 1 to 4. Um, and the food pantry list hasn't changed. Bobby's got her hand up. So if you have clothes that you're switching out for spring and winter and stuff that you don't wear, and you know all of that, and you would like to give it to the Hope Center, um, which lets people come and shop for free, um, Bobby will sort them. That's the part that's the important thing. Like she sorts them into gender and size and whatnot, age anyway, um, so that it's easier for them. The people that are eating and giving, giving things in there are also helped. Mm -hmm. um, so sufficient. Yep. Yes, they have a whole range of services that they offer to help people get get back in, a, in an apartment or a house or to stay where they are to have the resources that they need. And clothing is one of those things um, for work. And you know, we all need to be clothed anyway, but especially for work and that type of thing. So um, thank you, Bobby, for volunteering to separate stuff out and bring it over there. Um, it's a great time of year to be doing that. Anything else? All right, then please stand as it's comfortable for you for the blessing. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is on the back, and it's all on the back so that the refrain is there, so there's no flipping. Um, thine is the Lord.
risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ, raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Thank you.